Good morning. Uh, can you guys hear me? I, I, I'm not coming up with a picture. I'm trying to figure out what happened. I'm not seeing a, I don't know what happened. Audio is okay. So, sound and video are good? Oh, okay. There is a video? I can't see my own video. That's okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, so you guys um, sound the video. I wonder what happened with my video. I can't see it. I'm glad, you know, both are okay. I'll be darn. I'll be darn. I'm not, I'll have to figure out what that is at some later date. Anyhow, um, I wanted to share some stuff with you real quick. Um, Ta-da. Um, again, like I said, uh, this is sort of in a, in a blind because I can't <laughs> see my own window. Uh, this is a tourbillon that I put together. Um, and it seems to work fine except for one thing i uh, i can't get it to fit in the case just right and put the uh, stem back in so i'm working on it right now uh this part right here the turbione part is supposed to go at the bottom i've been uh, 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 never mind put it back here Try to figure out what happened to my audio, uh, my video. It's really funny. I can see it on one thing, but not on another. But I can see you guys fine. <laughs> so, anyhow, okie doke. Uh, today is one of those unplanned, totally unplanned days. What do you want to talk about? Oh, I'm freezing. Oh, well. What do you think about the new release, Chopek? Uh, Ant Cripe Mount Urbis in rose gold with a brushed blue dial. I bet it looks very nice. I haven't seen it, Thomas. Um, okay, a am I freezing now? What's going on? I have no idea because I can't see. Where would it be? Let's see. Pop out dashboard. Channel level settings, sound. Oh, wow. Everything is fine. Okay. It's a beautiful day in Miami. Here, it's, it's a pretty nice day. It's a little cold. But it's it still thinks it's winter. Okay, Doke. Let me see what's happened that um, I think we need to discuss. Um, I'm hoping that hoping against hope that we will uh, guys and um, who have on the Larique watch. I'm hoping that we're gonna start getting those pretty soon uh one of the things is that the the quality control is sky high so sometimes <laughs> i mean i like good quality control i i don't want it though <laughs> it's sort of over perfectionist but we've got a real good guy keeping an eye on that for us um let's see what else is going on uh so i think our big thing is is having uh, uh, our watch available for the charity so they can get whatever they need to get. Okie doke. Um, so that's sort of coming out, and we want to get it there before April 6th. That involves only 100 people. <laughs> so it, that's a lot to them, but to everybody else is probably not. Has the HSNY watch been shipped yet? Not yet. It's it's uh, scheduled to be shipped tomorrow. It, I thought it was going to be shipped on Monday, 
but um, no, it hasn't been. Okay. Um, seven waves here in Gulf Shore. Seven foot waves. Good God. Is, whoo, man, that's a lot, Steve. Gulf Shores is, is that in the Florida Panhandle or where is that? Seven foot, geez, man. Back in my surfer days, we would, we would skip schools to go to us, had seven foot waves. They used to have a place that had them not too rarely was a place called Rincon in uh, Southern California, just south of, I think it was between Santa Barbara and Ventura. It's been a while. Jeremy, keeping my fingers crossed for speedy delivery. Yeah, aren't we? Yo, yeah. Oh, this is your lady, HRM, right? Hey, Steve, Alabama. Okay. Uh, just across the border from uh, Pensacola. All righty, I know where that is. 76 and no waves here in Miami. Yeah, Florida doesn't tend to have the surf, but man, I'll tell you, seven foot waves, if you're getting seven foot waves coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, when I taught at the University of Florida, uh, my boss was a avid, avid fisherman and, and we'd, he'd take me out. We'd go down to Cedar Key and go fishing from Cedar Key. And uh, the water was like, almost sort of like a lukewarm and i was used to california where it was even in the summertime it was cold they had the i think the japanese current coming down 43 and no waves here in the mountains of new york <laughs> you know we got a pond i swear we started seeing some waves in our pond when we had all of that wind and everything Hey, Andrew, what's up? Leaving tomorrow for a visit for Santa Barbara. Really? Give my regards. That was, I, I went to elementary school and part of elementary school and high school and most of college there uh, at in uh, UC Santa Barbara and Santa Barbara High. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was a long time ago. I think I think that was when we used to. I don't know. It, it, everything has changed so much uh, since then. So, who knows what's going on? Share. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna hit a button here that says share. I hope everything works okay. Um. Oh wow. Unplanned talk. Let's see what I can share. Close. I'm not gonna share anything. <laughs> I think I had to get something to share. Let me try sharing something. Let me, th this ought to be fun. Um, going to Watches and Wonders in a couple of weeks. Can't wait to see the new releases. That's a nut, nutmeg state monster. Jesus. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. What I was going to do is to show you guys something, see if I can do this. I'll have to open up. Yes, I'm not sure how to do this. Eh, sounds like fun. Okay, share this. Okay. All right. Okie doke. What's going on here? I'm the owner. Okay. Let's see. Um, whoops. No, never mind. Oh, never mind. I can't figure out how to do that. Okay, what kind of uh, what kind of watches? 
I mean, Sonny said, okay, you can really plan. You can have, we'll start making, we're going to start a watch company. Let's say all of us get together. We're going to start a watch company and we'll say we have all the financing we need and everything else. Hi, Marcelo time. Uh, do you think Rolex will discontinue the Daytona Le Mans? Maybe for steel version of the Le Mans Daytona. I don't know. Um, sort of one of those things that I'm not too concerned about, uh, Marcelo. Uh, I don't have a Rolex. And the ones that I, if I got one, the ones I would be interested in wouldn't be a Daytona because I'm really not into chronographs. Uh, what I'd like to see Rolex do is to come out with something like a double barrels and parallel, uh, a um, Rimantois Galate. That's what I'd like to see Rolex do. I could care less about them warming over the same models they've had, you know, like in calling it slow progress. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I people who love Rolexes love Rolexes, but my God, I, it's like, okay, <laughs> so what, when are you going to do something really exciting like the Prince? Now that I'd like to see them do. I'd like to see them revive the Prince one more time, see if they can come up with something on that. Okay, let's go back and start our watch company. What would be the things that we would put in a good watch company that we would go out and buy. And we got to include all of the things we need. Now, I let's not take one that anything that exists right now, but but then we have a carte blanche. We got plenty of dough as investors, we'll say. And we want to start a watch company and a kind of watch that, and, and we've got to consider everything like the price, the type of watch, everything about them so what would we do what would be the first thing you'd want to have number one nothing okay uh what i would like i would like a ah here we go I would release a micro rotor sports watch first. A micro rotor sports watch. Huh. Why a micro rotor? And why a sports watch? I got a feeling you're in terms of if you were doing like marketing and stuff and would be a smart move. I think something like that would be very interesting. But I was sort of curious, HRM, why, why you'd do it. I've actually, micro rotor, so you still see the movement. Ah, okay. Uh, what I would come out with would be a hand wound. For seeing the movement, I would have a movement that would have that would use finger bridges for the uh, wheel train and then you could see the whole thing from the barrel from the wheel down through the wheel train down to the um what are they called the uh the escapement and to the uh balance i mean like the the uh langenheim georg that's what i would do i would have a i would have a watch set look like that. Now, here's the question. Why would that be terribly expensive? Why why couldn't we do something like that that would be very inexpensive? Any idea? I I think, you know, once you have a base for it, uh to set up a base plate on it, Seems that Rolex will go with higher complications with the 1908. Seems they required a very... No, they're not. Uh, wait a second, Marcel. What, what's what's a higher complication? The 1908 is, to me, is what I hope the rest of them don't become because 
they put in silicon hairsprings in that 1908. Who wants that? I'll go get a quartz watch just as good, I mean, you know, or a smart watch. No, I was very disappointed to see that happen. And I don't see Rolex doing anything very interesting as far as horology is concerned. Now, I know they have a fan base, and that's great. They, you know, just sort of keep feeding the fan base with lots of ads and telling people they got a, the king of watches. <laughs> I don't know why I got a kick out of that. Okay, let's talk about real watches. I Now, probably, I think if you added them all up, Rolex makes about, about a million point something a year. Okay. Uh, of watches. So there's tons of them. There are tons and tons of watches. I'm talking about something that we can do everything we want. Forget Rolex because Rolex is, Rolex is in a way, um, while it's very popular, and I have nothing against Rolex, but it's just not everything can't be it. And if we're looking for innovation, that's sort of not exactly the place that we'd be going. A new company. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hater. How you doing? Could laser skeletonize bridges and hand finish them? Well, uh, HRM, I was thinking of finger bridges. Now, Turbion, I've got a Turbion. I paid 120 bucks for it, <laughs> okay? What is a Turbion doesn't work? I mean, a Turbion is fine for a pocket watch because what it does is simply spin around the escapement into different positions. But as far as anything especially useful, uh, that's why, you know, I tell you something that they had. I tell you, if you want to take a, a, some really good horology coming out of Rolex is the, um, I think it's in, they got two watches with, with interesting horology. One is the Yacht Master 2, and that's their uh, regatta uh, countdown. And the other one is in the, Oh, the Sky something or other. What's it called? The Sky Master. Uh, they have some interesting, also some things, some interesting horology. The rest of them, it's good solid horology. There's nothing wrong with it. So anyway, Turbion, no. Nah, remember now, we're looking for a real watch that's that somebody could go out and buy. Sky Dweller, that's what I think. So first I'd want to have a great watchmaker. Wow. Yeah, me too. That's a good starting point. Marcella, why don't you just sort of park, park for now, not get rid of it, but just park the uh, Rolex. Okay. This is, we, this is a grown up discussion. <laughs> no offense. Okay. An automatic uh, diver watch. Every company has why have something that every company has, Equus? Why, why have, I mean, this is like, are there any manufacturers that sell a sheriff finger bridge movement? Oh, off the shelf finger bridge movement. Well, there was at one time, and they, they brought it back, and that was Langenheim's. It wasn't uh, Langenheim, but the same company. It was by a company called um, Uren uh, Verk Dresden, UWD. Yeah, Uren Works Dresden. And it had something that was called the 33.1. And that was uh, had a small second, but it had these little finger bridges that were in the shape of little bells. They looked like little bell bridges, okay. And each one of them, uh, and that was it was one of the last uh, movements that Marco Lang designed. And um, so, yeah, there's some that would be. 
the you know the the concept of a finger bridge is not new at all. Um, I tell you one. Hey, Marcella, you're gonna love this. Uh, the Rolex Prince. You know those? It has three little uh, finger bridges that came up, and they look like three waves. Now they were solid and so forth, but otherwise, I mean, finger bridges are nothing new. The um, the ones that I think are the ones that are in the Georg are, I think they may be the little bell ones. And what they have is that they have sort of this, the, the base of the bell is on like this. And then at the tip of the bell or the top of the bell is the, um, is where the, uh, the, the, uh, I what would you call it? The sh where the shaft or where the um, the shaft for the for the gearing would be. Okay, that would be so that wouldn't be too hard to find. <laughs> Marcelo, come on! This isn't the children's hour. Let's talk about Snoopy. <laughs> How can, please, man. Let's talk about concepts. Andrew, I'd also like to have a haute jewelry designer maker. I find myself bored with and underwhelmed by so many watch cases, lug designs. Okay. Hey, Quarters Eye, how you doing? What's the subject? We're we're going to we're, we're we're trying to say okay let's let's make a watch company that would provide watches that would give us watches we'd really like to have in terms of great horology a decent price we'll set the price what do you want to set the price at would it be under under ten thousand or under five thousand where where would you want to put it. A non-round case, hmm. Sort of a um, tourneau shape case or a rectangle case, uh, Brian. What about what kind of? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got the shape. Um, that Hebdo, that Hebdo had an influence on you, I think, Brian. Because <laughs> I thought that watch actually uh, hurting and valuing Omega brand by releasing a stupid collaboration. <laughs> okay, well, you know the thing, is, Marcelo. The thing thing is, is to me the hurt is. Is you know they're swatchizing all of these companies. These companies that have, what did I see the other day? Oh, I know what it was. It was a um, Glasshuda. Uh, I call it Glasshuda Original, and that's is owned by Swatch. But it was a couple that they hadn't swatchized yet, which means they had these really gorgeous uh, Swan neck regulators and other kinds of things that are, you know, sort of, I hate to use the term traditional, but I mean, if the choice is between calling it traditional and stuffing it with silicon, <laughs> then I'll call it traditional. Well, I mean, things that you, that you have, that you can have at least a choice of a curb regulator, uh, they the you know the ones coming out of um, now also Patek Philippe uh, and Swatch and just a little bit of Rolex, but not too much, thank God. Um, they they're, they're bragging about their free spun uh, balance wheels. They don't have any choice. <laughs> they can't have us. They can't have a curb regulator 
because you can't regulate it. Now, yes, there is the uh, thing that uh, Omega did. They have a little thing that they attach. It looks, what do they call it? It looks like a, a little square, a little rectangle at the end of the um, hairspring, of the silicon hairspring. And the thing is weird, <laughs> to put it bluntly. It works, but not very, but not too much. But it's something. Hey, quarter size. About 10,000 be good. Okay, be all below that. I'm old-fashioned. Got COVID for the first time now. <laughs> oh, my God. You're just getting COVID now, huh? <laughs> Jesus. COVID is no fun. I had it for about, I had had all my shots and everything else. And whap, I got COVID. But apparently, because I had all my shots, they gave me some stuff. What was it called? Paxlovid. They gave me some Paxlovid. Man, that cleared it up right away. So I only had <laughs> COVID for a few days. Then my wife got it. They gave her some Paxlovid, cleaned it right up. If you can get Paxlovid, Caesar, that'll, that'll take good care of you. It would be also interesting to modify an existing movement with new bridges. Yeah, uh, that would be true. P.F. Hebdo has a beautiful uh, shape movement. Yeah, no kidding. But that shape uh, finger bridge movement you posted on Facebook a while back, LNH really caught my eye. Yeah, that's the one that, that um, that's the... Um, the original Georg, G E O R G, uh, that they had. Gorgeous. That's a gorgeous thing. What you can do is you can actually see the um you can see the movement. To me, what's important about seeing the movement is is that some interesting stuff is going on. Uh, like this this little tourbillon I I got, I put it together and well, you gotta, gotta be careful. The thing is, thing is a loosey goosey thing. <laughs> like, ah, 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 ah. I'll break it uh, pretty soon, so I might as well show you before I break it. That's the way it's supposed to be, and so the um, uh, the it should be done with a six o'clock lugs. Uh, and the thing about this is 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 that it it works like a like a tourbillon should work. And is going around and around. Hey, Goldfinger, how you doing? Um, I don't know. That's what I would like. So you can really see it. I like hand wound. Why hand wound? You know, in fact, I'd even take a key wound one. Here's why. Uh, have do any of you have George Daniel's book, uh, Watchmaking? Any of you guys have that? I won't ask if, if anyone's read it because nobody's read the whole thing. <laughs> but do you have it? Does anybody have, have a copy of that? <laughs> no, Caesar, we, we can't ask for E3. I mean... What we've, we've got on E3 is so incredible already uh, that we'll, we'll have to wait. You guys, who are, the guys who are uh, working on the fourth one uh, could talk about that. Oh, you got it from the library. Okay. Did you realize, anyway, Brian, I don't know the rest of you guys, what do you guys do for fun? <laughs> uh, okay. The, um, the thing in... George Daniels was really, he didn't like anything in the keyless works because it got in the way. And so, uh, you know, here, here you have, if you could have a watch that had right on top of the barrel, there was a, there was a little hole and somebody stuck a key in there and wound it up, you wouldn't need any keyless works. And so that might be an interesting option, but definitely for me, it would be a hand wound. A 
having a rotor, if you put in a micro rotor, I've got a beautiful watch by uh, Jean-Marc Viterac, and it's got a little bitty uh, platinum rotor in it. And I love that watch. Yeah, I can't pronounce it. It's a Van Cleef and Arpels Air DC at Ur Dyer. It means time here and time elsewhere. Uh, but it's, you know, it's really nice. But I can't, the, I like big balance wheels. Why do I like big balance wheels? Because they have better inertia. And so with the inertia, you're not, you're going to have greater stability. Now, the little bitty ones <laughs> don't have quite the same inertia. Now, one way, let me see if I can show you on this one. Okay. All right, this is an FP Jorn with the power reserve indicator on the dial. <laughs> okay. But in looking at it, in the back, not only did Jorn make the back out of gold, um, you can see pretty much of it, but those are the dual barrels in parallel. And you can see the compared to something, anything that you'll see in a watch with a micro rotor, you'll see a larger uh, balance wheel. Now, I realize that dual barrels also cuts down on the real estate. And so, again, I would probably want a single barrel and I wouldn't mind a key wound, but I'd probably go with a hand wound on that. Okay. Uh, the keyless works also often seems overlooked and nobody finished compared to the rest of the movement. You know, that's a very good point, HRM. That's very true. Hey, Truman. I think it would be uh, really interesting to set up a hypothetical company as a cooperative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Co yeah. You know, that is true, true. It, to set it up as such. And then I would love this. You know, I really like it uh, when somebody else does it because they got to do all the work. <laughs> but yeah, a cooperative would be a great way to do it. Because you can get, oh, you know, four or five times as much watch for the same price with a cooperative. How much do you think the keyless works adds to the movement? I don't know. Uh, it, it does enough that George Daniels sort of had a tissy fit over it. <laughs> if, you, if you read, next time you go to the library, look up the keyless works and he has a rant george daniels has a rant he says well if anybody you know loses a key to the uh to a keyless to a key wound watch they don't deserve to have a watch that was like they realized that all of the watches and all of the illustrations were keyless and believe it here here you have probably the most important work you know, on horology done in the 20th century. And I would say also the 21st century so far. And it's mainly <laughs> to you with watches <laughs> that are hand wound, or I mean, are looking at the mechanism. Because if you stop and think about it, really the keyless works are for nothing but convenience. Same thing with automatics. I don't think he was crazy about automatics either. Uh, the he he wanted everything to focus on the on the movement. Now, with a mechanical movement, those things are vitally important. You know, with quartz and or with that's why silicon hairsprings have lost a lot of interest. I think, and God bless. Rolex for keeping their parachrome hairspring on most of their watches. But, you know, the, you open it up and you, and you see how it works and you can really understand sort of the root of all mechanical horology, which I think is, it's like, that's, that in and of itself is fantastic. Hi, Equus. I have the impression that the automatic uh, diver watch is interest catcher model 
and many brands. You know, Equus, you're absolutely right. See, there's there's something. If we make a, a watch for the market, I mean, for the marketplace, for sort of people, for what I'll call practical people, um, you you obviously wouldn't have a key wound watch. In fact, you'd probably want to have an automatic. You might even want to have an automatic with a micro rotor. Um, the the point of an automatic, though, is that it takes away the process of winding. You get to hold your watch and look at it and wind it. I mean, like, at least for a collector, this ought to be something that is sort of an enjoyable ritual uh, that you get to do. And you get and, and look at the back. You can see so much more of the watch and there's not as much there you don't have you, you like i said this does have double barrels and that takes up some real estate but um you know that's i mean one of my one of my favorite watches is my fabergé and it has a um Frederick Piguet movement, 1160 or 1150 movement in it. Wonderful movement. and But they have a solid back on it. So I took the back off. Now, they have a rotor to end all rotors. They have this incredible rotor with the, Imperi the Russian Imperial Eagle on it. I thought, my God, look at this. This is the most, I mean, if you got to look at a rotor, you might as well look at something interesting. And that thing thought, oh, wow, look at that rotor. That's really something. But the the um, the point is, why have a solid back uh, when you have a rotor that you know that is you know a, basically an engraved spinning empirical eagle? It's a, oh, why would you do that? The watch itself is, you know, with that Frederick Piguet movement is a joy. It's very, everything about it is I like, except it's an automatic and I can't see the movement. Ooh, a Calisys one. Yes, Caesar. Now that's an idea. Um, you know, uh, Vincent Calabrese has already, he, he took a Salida, I think, and did a test of concept with it, and it worked. With, and uh, that's another thing. That would be a very interesting watch. You could have it, you could have it wide open with these little bell finger bridges so you could see everything and have a single barrel not too small, but, you know, have just a single barrel so you're not taking up any real estate. Have a nice big, ba yeah, wait, do you need a balance wheel? Uh, yeah, I think you do. What, what is that? Is that, now the calcis, does calcis take out the balance wheel or just, it, oh, it takes out the hairspring, right? Forgot how the calcis worked. This thing by uh, Vincent Calabrese is really wild, though. That's really a very interesting uh, thing to have. Equus, you'd like to have a Fuzi and chain transmission watch. You know, that's one thing, Equus, that you can you can go and and get uh, if you go to you know someplace like eBay. They got tons of the Fuzi and chain, uh, but they're all on pocket watches. But then you see how fat they are, and it's like, you know, the, the Fuzi looks like this pyramid. And so you have to have a really thick watch. And then you got the chain going around, and that goes over to the uh, barrel because it controls the constant force by the barrel itself, by how the barrel unwinds. Uh, those are wild, yeah. Hey, Marcelo time. What are your thoughts about Credor watches from the Seiko group? Highly competent. You know, he, here's something, um, uh, Marcelo. 
you have uh, to me Seiko watches makes almost perfect watches um now I know that there will be like a million people who say no they're not perfect well they're probably not but they're to me they're they're like they're too good in this respect they they have such a good creation process that i i wonder you know they 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 sort of like did they, did they ever have a soul like you know some watches really have a soul too or i think they do and others seem to be just sort of like they're all, all like quartz watches. Quartz watches, you know, you got the everything is perfect. You know, you keep perfect time until your battery runs out. They're great. Uh, same thing with a, a smart watch. Smart watch does everything for you. I mean, like mechanical watches, you want to have something sort of hand done by them somehow, some way, or at least you think they're hand done. That that would do. Hey, Chili Burger, Tilly Badger. I can't want to say Chili Burger. Hey, Chili Badger. Um, Grand Seiko, what do I think of spring drives? It's a quartz watch. It simply has a different uh, way of generating electricity. Brilliant engineering, Marcelo. Just super, really brilliant engineering in the uh, spring drive. And they keep wonderfully accurate time because they're, you know, they're working on a... Um, on a quartz, on a quartz, I guess what you'd call a quartz vibration machine. I don't know. That That's where they get their vibration. They're amazing, the amount of, um, I mean, you got a frequency of between about 18,000 semi-oscillations per hour uh, to about 36,000 uh, vibrations per hour. In a in a sort of traditional mechanical watch, you've got about thirty two thousand hertz, and <laughs> something like that, some crazy amount in a in a um, in a quartz, and that's why they're so accurate. Could I have one? You know, that might be possible. I bet I bet I could, but I'm not sure how. You know, probably, Brian, the, the way I could have a... Um, yeah, you need a balance wheel on that. What does that do? Oh, it's it replaces a hairspring. Right. Okay. I, Caesar, I was just... My thoughts were jumping around. So what does that replace? It replaces a hairspring, this little... Okay, Brian, yeah. Um, See-through back case, probably the best thing to do would be to take it to somebody. You know, maybe it's something, you know, I bet I know who could do it is Dominic. I bet Dominic could do it. You know, because it's got, it's made out of white gold. So you take a, a solid white gold case and then cut a circle out of it so you could see the, the old... <laughs> The Imperial Eagle getting spun around. I would be cool. I don't know how much it would cost. We'd have to bribe, figure out. We, we got to see if Dominic is open for a bribe or not. <laughs> Hi, Junior. How you doing, man? My wife actually agree with you. I could actually living here in Japan, my wife, uh, who is Japanese, and the tr and the tree is <laughs> she doesn't like Seiko. I don't know. I yeah, I don't dislike Seiko. That's the same, that's the thing about it. There's nothing, it just like I said, Seiko makes outstandingly good watches. You know, I tell you, there's a there's a movement that I got uh, that was based on a 4L Seiko. It's called a Soprod A10. Great movement, fantastic movement, and somehow I think it's got a soul, even though the 
movement that it was based on, which was Seiko's first attempt into high horology, was this wonderful movement they made. And then they made some kind of deal with Soprod, and Soprod ended up making it. I don't think they're, I don't know if they're making it anymore. They're owned by uh, Festina now. Uh, who knows? Long, long time ago, I lived in Japan. I even spoke uh, Japanese, but I was younger. So, you know, when I was really young, I could pick up languages much easier. Now I just murder them all. With a slipper clutch, sequential transmission, kind of like a fuzzy and chain. Ooh, HRM, that's a new one. I don't know that. That sounds interesting now. Slipper cut work on torque. So when it would uh, shift up or down, depending on the torque drops below a certain amount. <laughs> Do you own any pocket watches? Well, I own one and I broke it, <laughs> Junior. I love my, I, I got a key wound pocket watch. Let me show you my pocket watch. Oops. This is my pocket watch, okay? What I did, you can see back here, it's a key wound, it's key wound. And I, this is, this is a case that I got for it. And it was this wonderful, really nice movement. Hang on, the back. Look at the bridges on that. Just, it's really a gorgeous movement. Well, I broke it. So thank you very much. It was working perfectly when I got it. And then I was, I had to sort of tear it apart. And I even got a, a, a case that it would fit in. And during that process, I managed to bust it. So that's the way it goes. The thing I like, key, uh, the thing I like about a, a key wound watch is that uh, you don't have to worry about a stem. You know, a lot of things like that. There's no stem. There's just these little nubs where you wind it up. I might get another one because uh, I got the. I have a really great case for it. But otherwise, I'm really not into uh, pocket watches. I'm just into breaking them. <laughs> it was, I've got a drawer full of watches, <laughs> watch movements that have my untender attention. So. They're a lot of fun, though. You learn a lot. That's the big thing. I don't learn how to break them. I mean, you learn things beside how to break them. Wow. Yeah. Caesar, what I'm looking forward to in, in uh, Watches and Wonders is I would like to see some what I'll call traditional horology but or, or creative horology like the thing that George Daniels did with the um, coaxial, uh, like Vincent um, Calabrese did with Calcis. Uh, you know, watches with double barrels and parallel uh, remontois de galates. Interesting stuff that they do that is affordable. Right now, I mean, you go, you can get something by your bell 4C, and, but you can't afford it because it's $200,000. <laughs> so I don't know. That I'd, I'd really like to see. Just something that says, okay, we're going to have. I mean, beside Lurik. Lurik is full of great horology <laughs> because we're working with Agenor. And we have Jean-Marc Viderek's uh, Agen Pit and uh, Agenay's gears in the thing. Boy, would I like to see more stuff like that because, well, more so the Agenay's gear is for constant force because it is... I can't imagine anything that has almost total non-slippage between the gears. 
I mean, here you have a gear with springs and the other one sticks its teeth in there and it's not going to slip at all. And so you have a, that would be one type of constant force. I mean, here's a, you know, a bunch of yahoos like us get together and say, ah, that's what we want. <laughs> and, and we have, you know, I, geez, it, it always blows my mind why, why that can be done. I think one of the reasons that I'm probably not as interested in uh, watches and wonders as I should be is that you don't get things like that. You get new sort of something that the bean counters and the marketers figured out, not some creative watchmaker. So I, I, I don't mean to sound like, you know, pouring cold water. I would love to go to watches and wonders. Trust me, I really would. Um, I, I go to the uh, the watch show every year in uh, in New York and the uh, watch time show, and they have a there are a lot of new watches that come out uh, during that period that are then shown at Watches and Wonder. But you know, uh oh, Forbin. It looks Panerai like. I hope not. Well, actually, I like the looks of Panerai. I, I really do. I'm not crazy about the giant crown guard, but otherwise, I, I, I do like the design. RGM uses a lot of pocket watch movements, Hamilton and their watches. They do. They really do. And they, they come out with some nice watches. Forbin, I'm not impressed by a movement that solves long-time problems or limits uh, in watchmaking. Nah, I know, you know, you're practical, Forbin. I'm not. <laughs> I'm a romantic. How does that sound? I have one more, only one more, Marcelo. I know you collect watches for a long time and also been in the industry I haven't been in the industry that long. If if you're talking about Larique, we just started that a few years ago. Uh, do you see see now a bigger interest in watches comparing to the past? Parent, you know what? I think a lot of people are seeing in watches, which is really sort of sort of amazing and distressing at the same time, is they see them as investments. There are a lot. Uh, there are a lot more people who decide they're going to invest in watches, and they have. Uh, I don't think that's a very good trend. I don't think – I think you sort of have – ah, I think I compared it once to the uh, – there's a band, the Rolling Stones. Uh, there's M Mick Jagger, their lead singer. And um, uh, who's their, their, their guitarist who should be dead by now, um, but, but doing great? Uh, what's his name? The guy who's a fabulous uh, guitar player with uh, Grateful Dead. Anyway, those two are having a discussion, all right? And Mick Jagger told them, got his name. Keith Richard, that's right. Thanks, Forbin. Uh, Mick Jagger said, you got to remember, Keith, this is a business. And Keith told him, he said, we also have to remember that we're artists. And, and I think the artist part of watchmaking and horology often takes you know, some schmalzy thing that they do, like this Snoopy watch. I think Snoopy was very cool as part of one of the the Apollo program, but it becomes, you know, that's like Hello Kitty. You know, that's probably somewhere, <laughs> some watches. Hey, Mark J., how you doing? And also, do people are now interested in watches for the right reasons? No, I, you know, there's... The, People are interested in, in watches for a lot of different reasons. Uh, probably the reasons I'm interested in, is, in watches is not what most people are interested in. Um, 
so I can't, you know, and I'm not about to tell people well, you can't be interested in watches because of, you know, you want to make a, a, a buck from it. But, you know, if they want to do that, that's fine. That's their business. Um, you know, there's the, it, it's, um, I agree with, I'm, I'm more like Keith Richards <laughs> and without the drugs. Okay, gotcha, Foreman. I thought so. Why did I lose a formal attire? Because I retired. I could wear anything I wanted, and I, I got a beret, too. That's why. <laughs> when you're still working, they expected me to. I don't know, so I thought, well, I'm going to have my videos for that. I am... I am dumbfounded as to what happened to my <laughs> to my my video thing. There's some little thing on here that I'm not. Ah, oh, hang on a second. Let me see if this is it. No. I don't know what's going on with that. Let's see. Let me try this. Okay. Um, nah, I don't know. Hello, Mr. Newman. I just scored 10 vintage watches on a trip to Florida. Ah, good. I have called myself, Jay Newman, I've called myself a watch hacker for the four or five years since I started collecting. I think you can consider yourself a pocket watch hacker. Hmm. You mean I? Oh, you've been breaking regular watches, <laughs> not <laughs> different kind of packet, I guess. Let me see some here. Keep trying different things. Okay, what do you got here? Um, <laughs> Four bit. Yeah, name them. Of course, for example, a Picasso painting is just a piece of fabric with ink uh, material. Value may be $2, but artistic. Yeah, that's a good example, Marcelo. I, I think, yeah, we have to, uh, we really have to appreciate, I think, the Picasso in our watches and not the I don't know some schlock deal that uh, that you know is grounded out. You know, not an AI painting for God's sakes. <laughs> there will be those. Okay. Well, listen. Um, I gotta. I better scoot now. It's about. It's almost twelve o'clock. I. I'm, I really appreciate you guys putting up with me today because I it's sort of hard for me to to uh, to not get any feedback to what I'm saying. I I could look, you know, got no idea. I know I need a haircut, but other than that, I don't know what is going on with this. Anyway, yeah, I know, Brian. That's what the frustrating part is. <laughs> oh man, I don't see what I. You know, it's really not fair that. You have to look at me, and I don't. You know, fair is fair. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks again for 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 coming. Hope to see. I hope to see me later too. <laughs>